Hey guys, it's Miss Johnson and I'm here to bring you our notes for Unit 8 Learning Target 5. Today we are going to talk about multiplying radical expressions. So when we are multiplying radical expressions, we are going to multiply two parts. We're going to multiply the coefficients on the outside and we're going to multiply the radicands on the inside. So outsides go together and insides go together. And then once we've done both of those two things, we need to simplify just like we've been used to simplifying, like we've been doing for the last few lessons now. So um, let's do some examples. This should be a pretty simple lesson and hopefully we'll do okay. All right, so simplify the expressions. I wanna look at multiplying the outsides and the insides. So first, the outsides are just one times one. So I don't really need to worry about that, but I do need to put the two and the five together because they are inside. So one times one on the outside stays a one. I don't need to write that coefficient of one, but on the inside, two times five gives me 10. Um, I can't break 10 down at all because it just gives me two and five and there are no pairs to take out. So. I'm going to leave it as the square root of 10. Let's take a look at number two. In number two, I've got the outsides of four and six. That gives me 24 when I multiply those together. And then on the inside, I have three times two, which is six. So I have 24 root six. Six cannot be broken down at all because six is just three and two, like we just put together, and there's no pairs there. So 24 root six is your expression. So then let's take a look at number three. I have the square root of 20x squared times the square root of 6x. So now my outsides are just one and one. I don't need to worry about those. But the insides, I have 20 times 6, which is 120. And I have x squared times x to the first, which is x to the third. Okay, so now I've taken those two things and put them together. Now I'm gonna reduce all of it. So I know that 120, you can break it back down into 20 and six if you want, or you can look at it as 12 and 10. It doesn't matter where you start. Bottom line is you need to break it all down. This is a two and a two, that's a three, that's a two, that's a five. This is gonna be x times x times x. So my whole radicand looks like that. Ah, I made a highlighter there. It's not what I wanted. Let's try pen. There we go. Um, there it is. So my whole radicand looks like that. That's the list of all the factors underneath. These are all being multiplied together. The only pairs that I see, I see a pair of twos and I see a pair of x's. So twos can come out and x's can come out. So I have a two and an x on the outside. Inside I have three times two times five, which is gonna be 30, and I have an x left over. So two x square root 30 x, that's a zero there. Let's take a look at number four. So again, outsides and insides go together. So on the outside I have one times four, which is just four. On the inside, I have 18 times 3. 18 times 3 is going to be 54. And then a squared times a squared, which is a to the fourth. Now, let's break all that down. So, 54 is going to be 9 times 6. 9 is going to be 3 times 3. 6 is 3 times 2. And then the four A's look like A, 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 and A. That is all underneath your radicand. Don't forget, or your radical sign. Don't forget that this four is on the outside already from the one times four that we put together. Um, and now look for the pairs underneath. So pairs underneath, I can take out a pair of threes and I can take out a pair of A's and another pair of A's. So outside I now have four times three times A times A. Left underneath, I have three times two, which is six. Put that back together, that's 12. That's a squared, that's square root of six. All right, let's take a look at number five. In number five, I have negative three times the square root of seven m to the third, times six times the square root of 20, 21r squared. So, negative three times six goes together on the outside, and yes, you can have negatives outside the radical. You just can't have negatives underneath the radical. So negative 18, and then I have seven times 21. 
which gives me 147 after I typed that into my calculator. Um, I still have m to the third. I still have r squared. Okay, now I need to break down the inside. So that 147 we know is 7 times 21. I'm just going to break it back down into that. 21 is going to be 7 times 3. This 7 comes down. m to the third is m, m, and m, and r squared is r times r. Here's my um, list under my radical. Don't forget that the negative 18 is already there. So then the pairs, I've got a pair of sevens that comes out front, a pair of m's, and a pair of r's. And then I'm left with a three and an m. So I have seven times the negative 18 that was already there, times the m, times the r, Sorry, that was an R, kind of got messy. Um, and then I have three M left over. So seven times negative 18, I'm gonna put that into my calculator. That's negative 126, negative 126, M R square root three M. There's my simplified expression. All right, now let's talk a little bit different here about distribution. If I take a look at multiplying a radical times something that is inside parentheses, I have to distribute here. That means that that square root of the 3 needs to be multiplied by both the square root of 5 and by the square root of 4. Um, there's nothing on the outside of any of these radicals. I only have a 1 and a 1 and a 1. So I don't need to worry about the outsides. But now I'm going to put the insides together. So the first one... 3 times 5 gives me the square root of 15. The second one, 3 times 4, gives me the square root of 12. Okay, now think back to the previous lesson. Our previous lesson talked about adding and subtracting radicals. When we are adding and subtracting radicals, we can only add and subtract like radicals. 15 and 12 are not like radicals. I cannot put those together. So I'm going to have to leave those separate. However, I can simplify each one individually. 15 can't be broken down at all. It's just 3 times 5, which is already prime, so that's going to stay 15. But the 12, 12 we know is 3 times 4, and 4 is a 2 and a 2, which that pair can come out front. So that leaves a 3 underneath. Here's what it gives me. So this square root of 15 is going to stay the same. Then I'm going to subtract, because that's what's in the middle, the 2 times the square root of 3. That is my simplified expression after I have done, that's my product basically, after I've done the multiplication. Let's try a few more of those. So now I have negative 3 root 3 um, times the square root of 2 times this plus the square root of 6. So those two things need to be distributed. This Outside coefficient for both of these is a 1, so that helps me. I've got negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3. And then underneath the radical, 3 times 2, which is 6. Okay. Then I have negative 3 times 1 again, which is negative 3. And underneath the radical, 3 times 6, which is 18. All right. So, again, these are not like radicals. They cannot be put together. But there's a couple of things we can fix here. One, I'm going to change that plus negative 3 just to minus in the middle. Okay, and then two, I need to break down my radicals if I can. Six is just two and three, so I can't do anything with that. But 18 is two and nine, and nine is three and three. So then I have this pair of threes that can come out with that three out front. So this whole term is going to stay the same. Didn't do anything with that. Negative three root six minus in the middle because plus a negative is the same as minus. Now I have 3 times 3 that I'm dragging out, which is 9, and a 2 left over underneath, 9 root 2. Those are still not like radicals. I still can't put them together. So that's it. That's the end. Let's try and read. In number 8, I have the square root of 14x that needs to be distributed to the 3 and also to the square root of 2x. So be careful in this one because our, our brains want to tell us multiply the 14 and the 3 together. But guess what? 3 is not under a radical. So when I multiply these two things together, I just end up with 3 times the square root of 14x. That's it. Then the second one, I've got the square root of 28x squared. All right. So 
Now I look for what I can break down. 14 is just two times seven. That doesn't help me. I can't take out a pair of anything. So this whole term is gonna come down and be the same thing. However, 28, I can break apart. This is the same thing as four times seven and four is two and two. Also, this x squared is x times x. So we've got a pair of twos and a pair of x's that can come out of the radical. So this two is gonna come out, this pair of x's is gonna come out, leaves me with a seven. So three root 14 x is the first term minus, now I have a two x outside and a square root of seven underneath. 14 x and seven are not like radicals, so I cannot do anything else. That's my simplified expression. Ooh, getting a little more complicated here. So I've got two, times the square root of two x multiplied by the six, and then multiplied by three times the square root of five x. So again, outsides and insides. So the outsides, two times six is 12, then square root two x, eh, not 26, sorry, two x. Um, and then the second term, outsides and insides. So two times negative three is negative six, and then the insides, two times five is 10, and x times x is x squared. The only thing I can break down there is the x squared. Two and x can't take anything out. 10 is two and five, but they don't have a pair, so I can't take anything out. This is x times x, that's a pair of x's. Take that pair of x's and bring it out with the six. So this whole term is the same, 12 times the square root of two x, and then that whole term is gonna be now negative six x square root of 10, because the 10 I had to leave. Not like radicals, can't put them together. Holy buckets, we get a lot of multiplication here. So multiplica multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding, that's what's happening. All right, so let's go to work. Outsides and insides, two times one is two, and then I have the square root of three. Outsides and insides, I have the two, and then I have the square root of 15. Over here, I have six times the square root of two, and then I have minus three times the square root of 10. And guess what? Nothing can be combined and nothing can be simplified. You've got a square root of three, can't break it apart. Square root of 15, that's three and five, can't take out a pair. Two, can't break it apart. 10 is two and five, can't take out a pair. None of them are like radicals. That's it. You can't do anything else with that one. Oh boy. So think back to our unit on polynomials when we would multiply two um, binomials together. When we multiply two binomials together, we set up a box. And we are going to do the same thing here, except that now it's with radicals. So I've got the square root of 5, the square root of 3, then I've got the square root of 5 again, and a negative square root of 3. So what happens here when I put all this together on the inside? Square root of 5 times square root of 5, that's square root of 25. Square root of 5 times square root of 3, that's square root of 15. Square root of 5 times negative square root of 3, that's negative square root of 15. And yes, that negative is outside the radical, not inside. And negative square root of 3 times square root of 3 is negative square root of 9. All right, so those are the four terms that I have. Now, one thing that I want to show you before we move forward. Take a look at this negative square root of 15 and positive square root of 15. You have positive 1 square root of 15 and negative 1 square root of 15. These terms cancel each other out. That's a plus and a minus of the same radical. They cancel each other out. So then all you have left is the square root of 25 minus the square root of 9. Well, what's the square root of 25? Square root of 25 we know is 5 and 5. That's a pair. Bring it out. 9 is 3 and 3. That's a pair. Bring it out. You end up with 5 minus 3 here. 5 minus 3 is 2. That's it. That's your answer. This whole thing simplified down to two. Craziness. Okay, let's take a look at number 12. Similar thing here, we've got um, two binomials that we're multiplying together. So set up a box. Your box is gonna have 
4 square root of 2, 4 negative square root of 2. Then multiply insides. So 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times the square root of 2 is 4 root 2. 4 times negative square root of 2 is negative 4 root 2. And square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, but it's negative. Negative square root of 4. So now, when I break this down, again, I want you to draw your attention to the diagonals. You've got negative 4 root 2 and positive 4 root 2. If you have 4 square root of 2s in your hand, and you take away, because this is negative, 4 square root of 2s, you have nothing left. Those two terms cancel out, okay? What you end up with is 16 minus the square root of 4. Well, guess what? Square root of 4 is a perfect square. That's 2 and 2. Take it, bring it out. So you've got 16 minus 2, nothing left under the radical. That's 14. So again, this whole thing simplified down to just 14. All right, that takes us to the end of our notes. So thanks for tuning in today, and I will catch you next time.